four quadratic exploration challenge. We just have one thing that we need to clear up. I alluded to it last lesson. Take a look at the first example. It says find the axis of symmetry and we're in factored form. That's pretty easy. So let's take a look really quick graphically. We know that the X intercepts would be negative two and positive six. And of course the axis of symmetry is right in the middle because that's the point of an axis of symmetry. So let's count it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Wow, it looks like the axis of symmetry is x equals two. But you know, if I'm not asked to graph it, I probably wouldn't. So let's just talk about getting it algebraically. Because we understand it graphically, it's pretty easy. x equals intercept plus intercept divided by two. So we see, of course, that we get x equals two algebraically. Perfect. Now, let's take it one step further. What happens if we would have been in standard form? Let's write standard form. You see I have y equals x squared minus 4x minus 12. Where's the negative 4 from? Well, x times negative 6 and 2 times x. So negative 6x plus 2x, negative 4x. Great. Now let's look at our standard equation. I wanted that standard equation there so that when I reference b, you know it's the coefficient in front of x. Now let's take a look at b for our equation. It says negative 4. Negative 4 seems familiar, not the same. Familiar though, if I look at this, I have this negative 4 here, and when I did intercept plus intercept, I had a positive 4. Why would they be almost the same, but not quite the same? Well, inside opposite. Remember, for the intercepts, we do opposite. So I'm going to use that. If I want the axis of symmetry, it seems like I could then do x equals the opposite of b, negative b, because negative negative 4 is positive 4, and then divide by 2. Gee, that seems like it works. I get x equals 2 this way as well. But wait. Let's look at part b because there's a little piece that we don't have plugged in here yet. You might notice on b it's almost the same equation except this one has a vertical stretch by a factor of 3. Well, in factored form, that doesn't really affect our x-intercepts because, of course, our x-intercepts are still negative 2, 0 and positive 6, 0. So I would still get the axis of symmetry, intercept plus intercept, divided by 2. But now let's look at standard form. We had already multiplied out the x plus 2 times x minus 6, but now with that vertical stretch by a factor of 3, I have to distribute the 3 into the trinomial. But before I do that, let's once again take a quick look. Do you notice that right now I still have that negative 4 in the middle and then the opposite of 4 is 4 divided by 2, 2? Yeah, but now I have to multiply in the 3, so just keep that in the back of your mind. Okay. So now what happened to our b term? Well, our b term is currently negative 12. So why is it negative 12? Because we multiplied the 3 into the negative 4. Remember that because now we're going to go and get the axis of symmetry. And remember that was the opposite of b, that's how we started it, divided by 2. But wait a second, if I divide by 2, I'm not going to get the correct axis of symmetry. We have to remember that we distributed that 3 in, so I have to undo that. I have to divide out that a value. Let's see if this works out now. Negative negative 12 is positive 12 divided by 6 is 2. So we have a quick way of doing it where we don't have to factor. We can just simply do negative b, opposite of b, the coefficient in front of x, divided by 2 times a. So what happened on the first one? Why didn't we have a problem with a? Well, on the first one, what was a? It was 1. So if I divide out 1, I'm still going to have 2 is my final answer. Write it down. To find the axis of symmetry from standard form, we take the opposite of b and divide it by 2a. Okay, so as I look at this next example, I could do intercept plus intercept divided by 2, and I'm going to get the axis of symmetry equals negative 1 half. Cool. Let's reinforce finding the axis of symmetry using standard form. Before I distribute that negative 4, let's look at b. b is 1 right here, so the opposite of b would be negative 1. <laughs> to find the axis of symmetry from standard form, I'm going to do x equals the opposite of b divided by 2a. So the opposite of negative 4 divided by 2. Now hold up a minute though, I have to divide out that a value as well. So I'm going to have 2 times negative 4. Whoa, so I'm going to get 4 divided by negative 8, which is negative 1 half. So x equals the opposite of b divided by 2a got me my axis of symmetry. 
Do you think you got this? Look at this next example. This one's already in standard form. So try to see if you can find the axis of symmetry using that x equals the opposite of b divided by 2a. Did you get the axis of symmetry as x equals negative 3 halves? Awesome, we've got this. Hmm, that seems like it would simplify how to graph from standard form now. If we have a quick way to find the vertex from standard. Yeah, because if we have the axis of symmetry, we have the x coordinate in the vertex. Right, plug it in, get the y coordinate, bam. Okay, so as long as we understand math, we can do it more efficiently. Exactly, so we wanna go ahead, graph the three problems as efficiently as possible. Try the first one, come back and see how well you did. Woohoo! Look at this one. What form is it? Vertex! Yes! I already have the vertex! Let's be efficient! So inside opposite, outside same, vertex is at 1, 9. Plot the point. Now, someone might think this is super hard from here, but we know it's not because we have our pattern points. So remember, the pattern points for our parent function at the vertex, over 1, up 1, back to the vertex, over 2, up 4, back to the vertex, over 3, up 9. And then keep in mind, we could keep going and going and going, right? Over 4, up 16, over 5, up 25. We don't have to stop, but we will because we only need three points, the vertex and two others. Alrighty, so I do need to pay attention to one thing here, and that is that we have been reflected about the x-axis. Well, then that just means back to the vertex, over one, but instead of up one, I'm gonna go down one. Back to the vertex, over two, down four, back to the vertex, over three, down nine. But do I even need that many points? Not for these quick graphs and being efficient. So let's just do from the vertex, over one, down one. So the point to the left I'm going to use is zero, eight, and the point to the right will be that two, eight. I can sketch my parabola so long as I remember to have a curve, not straight segments. So keep in mind, this was just a quick sketch, being efficient, showing we understand the math. Vertex, pattern points. Number two, remember, be efficient. You need the vertex and two points. Miss Ryan will be back to check your work. Looks like this next one is factored form or x-intercept form, so that means I know my intercepts right away. Three, zero, and one, zero, because inside opposite. Okay, if I get those intercepts plotted, what can I find next? Trying to be efficient. The axis of symmetry, it's easy to see because it's right in the middle, x equals two. Now remember, if I wanted to find that numerically, I would just do x-intercept plus x-intercept and divide by two. So three plus one divided by two would be x equals two. Okay, so I have the axis of symmetry. That's the x-coordinate in my vertex. How do I find the y-coordinate? Plug it in, plug it in. Y equals one half times, okay, two minus three, two minus one, parentheses first. One half times negative one times one is negative one half, woo! So negative one half right there. Look at that, that's three points. I can now graph my quadratic. So there's my sketch of my parabola. Sometimes it does help to have some extra points so I can get my sketch a little bit more precise. So my point to the left of my vertex was my x-intercept of one zero. My point to the right was my x-intercept of three zero. Now just a reminder, if we think about our pattern points for this one, we can kind of check to make sure this actually works. So my y values are multiplied by a factor of one half because of that vertical compression by a factor of one half. So if I started my vertex, I usually would go over one, up one. So back to my vertex, okay, I'd go over one, up a half, because one times a half is a half. And look at that, that's totally what happened here. Over one, up a half on both sides to get those x-intercepts. Now, standard form. Let's see if we can graph this one efficiently. Remember to get the vertex. All right, so whew, I was able to use that opposite of b divided by 2a to find my axis of symmetry, which is my x-coordinate of my vertex. Now it's negative 5 thirds. How do I find the y-coordinate? Plug it in, plug it in. So I'm going to plug in negative 5 thirds to my standard form to find my y-coordinate. Let's be careful here. Okay, so I plug in that x value of negative 5 thirds. Now I'm going to need to square first negative 5 thirds squared. Well, I just squared the numerator and I squared the denominator, so 25 ninths then 10 times negative 5 thirds would be negative 50 thirds. And then because I'm subtracting a bunch of fractions here, it's probably smart if I go ahead and write one as 3 thirds, right? Because 3 divided by 3 is 1. <laughs> now, 3 times 25 ninths, the easier thing to do here would be to go ahead and divide out a 3, because 3 divided by 9. So if I divide out that 3, I'm going to get 25 thirds. That way I never had to multiply 25 by 3. So now I can just subtract and get negative 22 thirds. 
not beautiful, but who cares? <laughs> 22 thirds is my y coordinate and my vertex. So let's plot our vertex. Now we can't go to decimal here because one third isn't exact. So let's go to mixed number. So I would go, okay, negative five thirds is negative one and two thirds. So that in my x direction. And then in my y direction, negative 22 divided by three is negative seven and a third. If I plot that vertex, make sure you've labeled it somewhere. So, I mean, we identify it at the bottom, but when we don't have integer coordinates, we wanna make sure we label them. Okay, now I just need two other points so that I actually have a parabola here. So I don't even need to find pattern points here because this is in standard form. That means I know my y-intercept right away. It's that plus one. So zero, one is my y-intercept. And now I can just use symmetry to plot that point on the left side as well. So from the y-intercept to the axis of symmetry, well, that distance there is five-thirds. So if I want to figure out where that symmetric point is, I want to be five-thirds from the left of the axis of symmetry. So five-thirds plus five-thirds is ten-thirds. So that coordinate would be at negative ten-thirds comma one, the same as our y-intercept. Well, there is my parabola. So the point to the left of my vertex was that negative ten-thirds one, and then the point to the right was the zero one. So the most important thing is to be efficient. When you're graphing from each of these forms, you should be doing it the most efficient way. What did you notice about this? The easiest form to graph from really seemed like it was vertex because all I needed was the one point, which was my vertex, and then I could pattern it after that. Yeah, we're so good at pattern points. I mean, factored wasn't too bad because we had the two x-intercepts right away, axis of symmetry right in the middle, x-coordinate of the vertex, plug it in, find the y-coordinate, boom, it's almost like so quick. And then of course standard, we just learned how to find the axis of symmetry from it. And once I had that, I could plug it in to find the y coordinate of the vertex and then use my y intercept instead of pattern points yeah. to draw my graph. And symmetry, yeah, yeah. Converting madness, converting madness, converting madness. No. Converting to vertex form. Okay, we have standard form here and we wanna to get to vertex form. So we're gonna need the vertex. All right, x equals negative b over 2a, go find it. Once we have that axis of symmetry, remember that's the x-coordinate of my vertex. So how do I find the y? Plug it in, plug it in, go for it. Okay, I've got my vertex to negative 29. So now I'm ready to plug it into vertex form. Y equals a parentheses x minus h squared plus k. What's a? Well, look at my standard form. A is ax squared. So I've got the three. So I'm gonna make sure I write three x minus h what's my h well it's right here in my vertex so two squared don't forget that squared that's what makes it quadratic plus k which is negative 29 so minus 29 y equals three times x minus two squared minus 29. okay number five this one's in factored form you know how to find the vertex from x intercept form go find it All right, so when I had to find my vertex, I did x-intercept plus x-intercept divided by two to find my axis of symmetry is x equals three halves, which is 1.5. Plug in 1.5 so I can find the y-coordinate of my vertex. What happens when I plug that in? I get negative two times 2.5 times negative 2.5. Well, 2.5 times negative 2.5, 25 times negative 25, 625 negative 625. Then I move my decimal place in twice because I had two decimal places there. I get negative 6.25 times negative two is positive 12.5. So now I have my vertex 1.5, 12.5. So I can write my vertex form y equals the a value is always out in front that negative two times x minus h is 1.5 squared plus k is 12.5. Woo! Next, we're going to convert to standard form. Well, we've practiced this a little bit before. Feel free to pause and then just come back and check. Be careful with notation as you go along and remember order of operations. So real quick, going from vertex form to standard, you had to be careful to go x plus two, x plus two. Don't try and do it in your head. We see way too many mistakes. As a matter of fact, I might mark it off on your paper if you do. And then distribute that one half throughout the trinomial. Keep that negative eight coming along the whole way. If it's not written on every step, that's incorrect notation. Your final answer, y equals one half x squared plus two x minus six. Next, convert from factored to standard. 
That was almost too easy. All right, number eight, converting standard form to factored form. When I first looked at this, I was like, piece of cake, all right? So negative two X times one X and then factors of 24 and I wanna get eight in the middle. And then I went, oh, that's a little bit harder. Ah, oh, I forgot to start strong. Where's the GCF? Oh my gosh. All right, erase. Look at that now, when I factor out that negative two from all three terms in the trinomial, then I still need to finish strong, which is make sure it's fully factored. So take that trinomial and factor it. Let's do crisscross. It's pretty easy to know that I needed six and two. The B value is negative, so remember the larger product should be negative. So that means I need this six to be a negative, so it's going to end up right there as one X minus six. That of course adds to my negative four. Now have correct notation. Notice that I changed colors to do that little side note calculation. Now I'm going to go ahead and finish, go back to y equals, don't forget a, negative two parentheses, x minus six parentheses, x plus two. Wow, we look at this next one. We're in vertex form and we're supposed to go to factored form. Eek. It's kind of like I have to go from vertex to standard and then standard to factored. There's not really an easy way to go through that. Let's do it in speed mode. All right, that was a little bit of work, but frankly, we can do it. And that really just shows how much math knowledge we have. But remember, we want to be efficient. There's not too often that we'd need to go from vertex form all the way to factored form. <laughs>